It ain't too many runners out there today. Is there anybody here that's ready to have some church today? Uh, I know it's been hard all week, but this is the Sunday that you ought to be able to come and shout that when you started running, God didn't let the enemy take you out. Uh, when you started running, uh, God didn't let the enemy trip you up. Uh, there ought to be somebody in the house that knows that sometimes you had to run uh, through the darkest of the night. Uh, I'm running for my life. My, my, my. Some of us either shout that when the enemy tried to catch us, God didn't let the enemy catch us running. Because we know good and well we don't run like we used to run. But thanks be to God that with the little run that I got, the enemy still uh, My, 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 my. Hey. Yes, God. Why don't you... Stand with me and then we'll pray. Stand with me. I'll be in the New International Version today. And I want to share with you just quickly and then we're going to pray. The New International Version of Mark, the first chapter, chapter 1, quickly through 29 to 39. My version reads like this. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. That's how like brothers. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. And they immediately told Jesus about her. Somebody say immediately. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. Oh, that just made me shout. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak. Because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a solitary place. And where he prayed, Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let's, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. This is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As you make your way to your seat, Look at your neighbor and say, I was down, but not out. I was down, but not out. It ought to be somebody ready to shout today because you know it's been some days, been some years in your life that you was down, but thank God you was not out. Oh, let's go. Father, I'm asking that you would show up and show out. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need. Father, today I don't come in my own strength. 
but I come in the word that you sent that became flesh. Father, we're looking for you today, God, to break chains, God. Uh, hallelujah, God, to heal the sick, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, reveal vision unto those who have been blind. Father, if there's unsaved, save them. If those who are crooked, make them straight. Uh, if anybody is a walk, Ah, hey, wow. uh, bring them into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But God, whatever you do, do it in this house. Whatever you're going to do in this season, don't do it without me, Lord. In Jesus' name is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout amen. I was down, but not out. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Here we are once again, anxiously awaiting a word from the Lord. But silently, I feel that somebody's hoping that it's a quick word. Because some of us have other plans for the remainder of the day. Mm -hmm. And today, what I would have you to know is it excites my spirit that God has a word for the person who is able to come to church. Knowing that there's someone back home who's unable to come themselves. Today it excites my spirit that God has a word for the person who has had to keep some family issues private. But today is the day that God is getting ready to show up in your situation. Sister Tony, it excites my spirit that God has a word for the person who may not be a member of our church, but God is about to go some other places with a word of hope, a word of healing, and a word of restoration. I shout right now, because I know that in the house right now, or somebody under the sound of my voice, there's somebody who's been sick on the inside, and they're ready for God to do a wonder work with some wonder power. Can I get an amen? Is there anybody who's tired of being on your deathbed, waiting for life to have its way? I'm just wondering, is there anybody ready to see God work, not just in your life, but in the life of your church. I'm just wondering if there's anybody who's ready for everyone who may be watching on the internet, everyone who you had to leave back in the house, everyone in your community to hear a word from God that will heal their senses so hear a word that will help them get out of whatever has had them tied up, tangled up, and even held up. Well, hold on. I can't just let you go with the shout like that. You see, Brother Dave, my spirit has made me aware that there is someone with us today who really doesn't know what it means to struggle. What it means to live in a struggle. What it means to have an illness that puts you flat on your back. And you can't get up with your own strength. Someone who doesn't know what an emotional weight it is to have someone you love dearly not be able to worship as freely as you can worship. Someone who just doesn't know how hard it is sometimes to get one foot out of the bed followed by another. You that you're saved, you know you've been praying, but today is the day that the enemy has tried to tempt 
prevent you from coming to the house of the Lord. And you ready for a word. You had to fight to get here. You had to talk yourself out of some other stuff that yourself said. Why don't you wash them dishes? Why don't you, you know your shoes don't match. You know your back hurts. But you fall through it because you felt that God was going to do something in your life. I mean, not too many people know what it feels like to have something just grip your well-being. To have something that may not have anything to do with how good you've been. How holy you've lived. Or how much money you put in that church. It didn't care when it put you flat on your back. But today is the day uh, that you might be down, but you're not out. Uh, Y'all gonna walk with me today? Today, as we look at the scripture that is before us, we realize that there's a lot of things happening in the text that we need some help so today, I'm looking for God to just let this text preach for itself. I'm looking for this text to speak to somebody who knows what it's like to have to live with some stuff that ain't nobody talking about, but you got to deal with it 24-7. Am I on anybody's street yet? Is there anybody in the house today that this is your story? Or this was your story? You was in such a bad place, you couldn't even go get any help. You were forced to have to wait. To wait for help to come find you. Oh my God, it's going to get good if somebody would just let God have his way. Well, we're in the book, according to St. Mark, who always gets straight to the point. So let me be likewise and get straight to the uh -huh. My brothers and sisters, my assignment today is to get out of the way and let this text just preach for itself. As Jesus begins his ministry in Galilee, at this point we know he has already called his disciples. Last week we heard that while in Capernaum in the synagogue, he had healed a man that had an unclean spirit by rebuking him and the spirit had to come out of him. What's interesting to me is to see how amazed the local folks were about this new teacher who spoke with such authority. Meanwhile, after healing in the synagogue, Jesus returns to Simon Peter's house. Y'all know Simon Peter, don't you? And there lies Simon Peter's mother-in-law in the grip of a fever. A fever was no small matter in the ancient world. They didn't have Tylenol, BC powder, and all that other stuff we can take. A fever in this day was not only debilitating for a short while, but it was often a symptom of a condition that was going to lead to death. The idea of having a fever, when you look at this text in the Greek, is a little bit stronger. Somebody say it's a little bit stronger. It meant that it wasn't just lying down with a fever. The sense that you get when you read it in the Greek is that the fever has so affected her that she was thrown into a sick bed without any hope of getting better. She was just waiting out the rest of her days. 
Has anybody ever been there? You was not flat on your back with the cares of life. And all you could do was just wait out your uh, you see the phrase lay ill means that she was flat yeah. on her back. And the word fever uh, refers to a fire that she felt in her bones yeah. Yeah. or a burning. The message translation, I like how it says it. It says that Simon Peter's mother-in-law was sick in the bed burning up with fever and because of the diseases that were prevalent in the marshy area around the sea of galilee at this particular time it is possible that maybe she had malaria or typhoid fever we just don't know can i ask a question though can you imagine trying to get your praise on at church, knowing that a loved one was at home, only able to lie on their potential deathbed and wait for you to come back with the good news? I'm just wondering, do you take the good news home when you leave here? Now, for those who like a little context, or maybe you're just naturally nosy. I would have you to know, we know nothing from Mark about this fever. Its intensity, its duration, or its cause. But what we do know is that a valued family member was unable to get up and go about her work. We know that this family member was not able to get involved in what we later find out to be her calling with serving or for practical purposes was unable to do anything that she desired to do. Her freedom had been taken away from her by this illness. Now if this was domestic violence month, her I would try to work this text uh, because we do have a situation where there is a person who needs some professional help, uh, but ain't nobody saying nothing. It took Jesus to show up on the scene, but her condition was not brought up before Jesus got involved. Now, it also gives some credibility to why some people don't invite the preacher to their house after service. Because maybe they don't want Jesus to see what may be bound back at the Ponderosa. I'm just wondering how many of us come in here and act free, act like everything is good at home, doing good and well, but you got a situation that you got to go back to, and you came today because you're looking to see Jesus. Is this the day that you're going to handle some stuff in my household? Is this the day that you're going to rise up some stuff in my house? I don't know about you, but there's some jokers back home that need to be rise so they can go get a job. There needs to be somebody who ain't scared to take Jesus back home so that everything that's bound in your house has to get up. Now, now, if I had more time, I would actually invite the mother-in-law to come speak for herself. You know, I noticed, Sister Tony, that after Jesus helped her, she went to work waiting on the Lord. But never do I see anybody asking her to share her testimony. I mean, after all, I've learned that sometimes it's those who have been held captive. Sometimes it's those who have been held bound. Sometimes it's those who can really tell 
tell you, I was once down, but not out. I was troubled on every side, yet not distressed. I was perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Hold on to God's unsafe. Okay, okay. Y'all sit down now. I'm a young preacher. Don't push me too fast. Plus, I don't want to give you the shout without the holler. <laughs> Let me quickly share with you what God has shared with me in this text. The first thing that God would have us to know about this text is that if you see something, say something. Ted said, as soon as they left the synagogue, the worship service, they went to James and John, I think they brothers, to the home of Simon and Andrew. Mm. Okay. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. If you see something, say something. Y'all know this is Super Bowl. Can I just digress? It's Super Bowl season. And a lot of us are ready to go to the game. At somebody's house. What we may not realize is that more goes on during Super Bowl than a football game. People who don't know the Lord, do what they call human Super Bowls. Meaning that human trafficking is at its all-time high. Because there's so many people coming and going in whatever the Super Bowl city is. Meaning that you might go to somebody's house and see something. God's looking for you to see something. Oh, I, I'm in the text. Can I, can I show it to you? Okay. See, sometimes this is where I get in trouble. Because, Sister Ree, I had a problem with this text right here. And the problem I have is when I insert myself in the text to kind of see what's going on, I realize that... They're at Simon Peter's house. Well, he has a brother that goes with him to church. Andrew and his brother come with them also. Now, when I think about the word, I understand that all these people are fishermen. And they go fishing on a regular basis. So, if nothing else, they at least boy. Because you don't go fishing with people you don't like. Any real fishermen in the house? You don't want nobody to mess up your fishing. So you don't go with people you don't like. So at this point, they are either boys or in a practical sense, they at least brothers. So I'm struggling to understand because I think we can ascertain that this ain't the first time they've been to Simon's house. So I'm wondering, why would you tell Jesus today when you've been over their house two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times and you ain't saying nothing? Don't go snitching when Jesus show up. Y'all felt that? Yeah. That's the same as you snitching when the law show up because now you scared. Yeah. You need to tell it every time you see it. Yeah. Now, we can't really get down on these boys too much because I saw something in the text made even me shout. What I'm struggling with is maybe... It's really not the brother's fault. Reverend, you might want to walk with me on this one. Because 
when you look at the text we have this Sunday and the text we just came out of last Sunday, we learned that when Jesus showed up in the church house, that there was a demon already in the church. And it wasn't until Jesus showed up that somebody handled the deed. So I can see these brothers conflicted because, oh, this is good to me. How can we ask anybody to invite us into their house when we ain't been handling our own? Okay, I preach better over here. See, up to this point, when they showed up in the church last week, which is the same day in our context, but we